Welcome to Ganitika.com. This is a website for mathematics lovers, learners and leaders. I hope you are enjoying all my videos and the website Ganitika.com. Please leave your comments and feedback in the comment box below. In this video, we are continuing with complex numbers part 4 in which we are going to deal with polar form of complex numbers. We are also going to see how to convert Cartesian form to polar form and polar form to Cartesian form in this video. So let's jump into the video now. So far what you have learnt about complex number is any complex number would look like A plus BI. So this is in Cartesian form which means that you can plot this point A comma B on an Argon diagram where the this horizontal axis is called the real axis and the vertical axis is called imaginary axis and A is the real part and B is the imaginary part. So this is what you have learned in video 2. Um, this, this type of, this way of writing a complex number is called Cartesian form. So in short, in for example, you can say 2 minus 3i. It's in Cartesian form because you can actually represent this as a coordinate 2 comma 3. Now we need to go back to our trigonometry uh, unit where uh, so you have been using something called unit circle and you know that any point on the unit circle could be written as if this is theta you can write this point as cos theta comma sine theta yeah I hope you know this uh, this comes from trigonometry but what if this was not a unit circle but you had um, the radius of the circle to be equal to r so what happens to this part that's what we are going to see as uh, uh, converting the Cartesian form of complex numbers to polar form consider this circle and uh, this circle is not a unit circle therefore the radius is r okay so if you take any point x comma y the length of this point from the origin is r units and you know that this is y and this part is x okay so you have a right angle triangle y x and r and if you know this is theta then how can you write y as in terms of x and uh, sorry theta and r and how can you write x in terms of r and theta you know that y over r is sine theta therefore y now becomes r sine theta instead of just sine theta as you did in unit circle so in the same way x becomes r cos theta Therefore, the point x comma y now is written as r cos theta and r sine theta. Okay, so what is this r? r is the distance of x, y from the origin, right? Which means the distance from x, y from the origin or this is the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle with x and y as its sides. So whichever way you look at this r, r is nothing but square root of x square plus y square. And this was called modulus of, um, modulus of a complex number x plus i, y and you can see this explanation in video 2. Okay, so modulus of x plus y is now the radius of the circle on which uh, we are dealing with okay and what is this theta so if this is theta theta is tan inverse of y over x if you look at this uh, triangle yeah and we know that this is called argument of a complex number x plus i y again as seen from uh, video number two Okay, so once you know modulus and argument, you can write x as square root of x square plus y square cos of tan inverse of y over x. Actually, you're not going to do all these things, okay? What you are going to do is you're going to find r as square root of x square plus y square and you're going to find theta separately as tan inverse of y over x looking into the quadrant that the theta is going to be in and all these things are explained in detail in video number two and once you know these two you can plug in those values into r and theta here and you can get what is x and what is y okay so this 
form of writing x and y is called polar form. In fact, if you have um, a complex number z as x plus i y, you can write the same thing as r cos theta plus i r sin theta. Yeah, r cos theta is x and r sin theta is y. So you can take r common, so r cos theta plus i sin theta would be the polar form of the complex number z equal to x plus i y. What did we do now? So if I have z complex number as x plus i y, then the polar form of this is r cos theta plus i sin theta because x is r cos theta and y is r sin theta and where r is square root of x square plus y square and theta is tan inverse of y over x and depending upon where the angle is you have minus or plus answers or 0 to pi or minus pi to 0. In this case r cos theta plus i sin theta in short form is written as r cis theta. So in general r cis theta means it's r cos theta plus i sin theta. So what happens to the conjugate? r cos theta minus i r sin theta, right? I can take the r out again. So let's just deal with cos theta minus i sin theta. So in this case, you should remember that cos of minus theta is cos theta because it's in the fourth quadrant and sin of minus theta is minus sin theta, right? Uh, therefore, I can write this cos theta as cos of minus theta Okay, and then I can write minus sine theta as sine of minus theta. Okay, so cos theta becomes cos of minus theta and minus sine theta becomes plus sine of minus theta. So I, as you can see, this is cos theta cos something plus i sine something, which is of this format. So I can call this as R cis minus theta. So R cis minus theta is the conjugate of r cis theta. Okay, remember this, you might have to use this in uh, some places later when you're adding, subtracting, multiplying complex numbers. Let's do some examples on converting Cartesian to polar and vice versa maybe, Cartesian to polar, that's easier one. Vice versa is just very simple. Polar to Cartesian is if you are given polar, you just have to plug in the values of r and theta there and find the values uh, and write them in x plus i y form. That's easy. So let's start with Cartesian to polar form. Say for example, root 3 plus i. So how will you do this? First of all, you need to find what is r and then you need to find what is theta. And then you can plug into um, or cos theta plus i sine theta. These are the three steps that you need to do now. So r is square root of x square plus y square. In this case, x is square root of 3 and y is 1, not i, remember. Okay, I, one, y is the number connected with i. So r is equal to 3 plus 1, which is 2. Here, in the square root of 4 is 2. And theta tan inverse of, or if you are comfortable using arc tan, you can say arc tan of y over x. y is 1 and x is root 3. Therefore, tan inverse of 1 over root 3, which is 30 degrees. Okay, or you can use, if you are comfortable with radians, it is pi over 6 radians. So, r cos theta. So, the, the complex number z now is 2 because r is 2, cos pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6. So in short, you can write this as 2 cis pi over 6. So the argument is pi over 6 and this is 2 is the, the modulus. So this is how you write this, uh, root 3 plus i into polar form. One more example say z equal to 1 minus i. 
So the first thing to find is what is x? x is 1 and y is, remember, minus 1. So remember these two. r is square root of 1 plus 1 because it's squaring x square and y square and then adding them. So don't worry about the minus sign for x or y. So this is square root of 2. And theta is tan inverse of minus 1 over 1. Why am I writing minus 1 over 1? If you look at um, the graph, where does this 1 comma minus 1 be? It is on in the fourth quadrant. So 1 comma minus 1 will be somewhere in the fourth quadrant, which means it's negative answer from 0 to uh, 90 degrees. So this is tan inverse of 1 with a minus sign outside. So tan inverse of 1 is 45 degrees, therefore this is minus 45 degrees. So z in polar form is square root of 2, cis minus 45, or you can write um, square root of 2, cis minus pi over 4. If you are going to expand this, then you can write this as root 2 of cos pi over 4 minus i sin pi over 4. And if you don't want to give minus sign here, then you should write this as cos minus pi over 4, which is again equivalent to cos pi over 4. But this minus becomes plus i sine minus pi over 4. And you should have noticed that I need to have these two angles to be the same in, in the polar form. I can't give this as plus pi over 4 and then here minus. I can't do that. It has to be the same. If I'm using minus pi over 4 here and then use it on in both the sides. Or if you want to give it as pi over 4, then use the minus sign at this place. Okay. Hope that is clear in this um, uh, context where you are changing Cartesian to polar form. Let's do two more questions here. And um, you can pause the video here. And then uh, check if check your understanding by doing it and checking with the video uh, with, with the answer after this video. And these are the two questions I'm going to do now. You can pause the video and try it yourself. R is before R. You can write x is equal to one and y equal to minus root three. So R is square root of one plus three. <coughs> sorry, and this is square root of 4, which is 2, as before. And theta is tan inverse of minus root 3 over 1, and check for the quadrant. This is minus x, minus y, and positive x. Again, this is in the fourth quadrant. So, the value is pi over 6, but it is negative pi over 6, which is negative, sorry, negative pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, negative 60 degrees. Okay, so the polar form would be not 2 root 2, it's 2 cis minus pi over 3. Or you can write 2 cos pi over 3 minus i sine pi over 3. So this is a way of writing uh, this Cartesian form to polar form. And let's check this. Uh, R is again 2 if you have done this yourself, and theta is tan inverse of minus root 3 over minus 1, which is in the fourth quadrant, okay? So it should be, it should be this angle that you need to worry about. So theta is actually this one, and this angle would be 60 degrees, and therefore in order to find this, 180 minus 60, and this is in the negative side, therefore minus 180 minus 60, which is minus 120 degrees. Okay, or you can write it in radians as minus 2 pi over 3 radians. So the polar form would be 2 cos minus 2 pi over 3 plus i sine, or you can use cis minus 2 pi over 3. Right, and if you want to use positive 2 pi, then it's 2 cos 2 pi over 3. And then the minus comes here, minus i sine 2 pi over 3. So either way is okay. Or if you want to give it in cis form, it's cis minus 2 pi over 3. Okay. Hope you got uh, the idea of how to convert polar form to, sorry, Cartesian to polar form. Let me do one question on uh, converting a polar form to Cartesian form. 
that's going to be very simple say i am given some uh, square root of 2 cos um, pi over um, 6 plus i sine pi over 6 then what you need to do is find the value for pi over 6 or if it is pi over whatever any angle you can use calculator if this is not a special angle and in this case this is a special angle so I can write cos of pi over 6 as root 3 over 2 and sine of pi over 6 is half so you can easily see that this is um, root 6 plus i root 2 over 2 or you can simplify this as root 3 over root 2 plus i over root 2 so either way both are correct simplifying is your problem there and uh, you can check how to simplify this to either one of these uh, answers so you can see that what you are supposed to observe here is this is in cartesian form so it's very simple just you need to find the cos theta and sine theta and use um, your simplification process and then simplify it into a real part and an imaginary part so you'll have numbers here and just that means that you are already in cartesian form hope you enjoyed this video and we'll meet you in the next video bye bye